how to protect our channel from man in the middle we have to define solution for identity management identity management means how alice can verify that public key received is from bob only so how can we do that the solution is digital certificate what is digital certificate let's understand digital certificate briefly digital certificate is a document which has many information related to owner for example few of the fields are version x509 is a standard format for public key certificates and v3 is the current version serial number this is the unique id of certificate issuer who has issued this certificate valid dates this certificate was issued on some date and valid till some date like if you are doing some online course or ccna then they are valid for next few years only similarly this certificate has also some validity after that this certificate will not be valid subject this section contain all information of owner of the certificate like if i am owner of cisco.com then cisco.com is my common name this also contain my address detail so these are some of the basic detail of certificate but this certificate is not valid in fact any certificate in this form is not valid what is missing that make this certificate valid signature now this certificate is digital so how can we sign digital certificate the solution is digital signature what is digital signature how is it working is digital signature work same way everywhere is it approved by government let's take one example here bob want to sign one digital document first bob will calculate hash of this document he can calculate hash using md5 sha1 or like so we are using hash when we are sending big size document over internet and the good thing about hash is irrespective of size of doc hash has fixed bytes like 32 if you change a single bit in document then its hash value get changed now bob will encrypt this hash for that he will bring out his pair of keys here bob will use his private key to encrypt hash provide both info to rsa formula get encrypted hash now bob will take original document insert encrypted hash into it so this is how bob is doing digital signature to document now let's see how to verify digital signature alice want to verify document signed by bob first alice bring out encrypted hash from document alice want to decrypt this hash now we know that hash was encrypted using private key of bob so alice need public key of bob to decrypt alice take public key of bob as that is available to everyone apply public key and hash to rsa formula get decrypted hash now take original document calculate hash again of that document and verify both hash here you can see if someone has tampered doc then encrypted hash 
an original document hash will not match. If someone has modified document and signed with his own private key, then Bob's public key will not be useful. This is how digital signature works. So whenever you saw digital signature, you know how it's been signed. And this is approved by various governments, including India and USA. This is one sample certificate took from my system. Here you can see subject section. This certificate is issued to apple.com issued by apple.com which means this is self-signed certificate. You can see valid dates, public key info and the most important field digital signature. Now let's see how to use digital certificate. First we will take a look at self-signed certificate. Self-signed certificate means my certificate and I am the issuer. So to understand how self-signed certificate works, let's take one bank example. I got one check. I have filled all information in it, provided my signature to it. I am presenting this check to bank. Bank will say that we do not have record of your signature. In simple word, bank will say that you do not have account in our bank. So first I have to open my bank account, provide copy of my signature to bank. Then next time bank will verify my signature. The same logic work here as well with self-signed digital certificate. Let's see how it works. Again bring back Alice and Bob. Here somehow Bob has already provided self-signed certificate to Alice by pen drive or some other way. So Bob's certificate already present into Alice machine. This is we call opening account to bank. Alice sent TLS hello to Bob. This is nothing but asking of public key. Bob reply with digital certificate and public key. Actually public key is part of certificate. Alice verify received certificate with already installed certificate. And if match then Alice has confirmation that public key is belongs to Bob only. Alice generate symmetric key encrypt key using public key of Bob, send it over internet, Bob receive key, decrypt it and establish secure channel of communication. This is the typical flow of TLS we have seen in the beginning of session. Of course few more info are there like which algo need to use for encryption and what is the key size. But overall flow of TLS is like this. Now someone has question here that if Alice already has certificate of Bob then why Alice is asking Bob certificate again? Just use pre-installed certificate and public key to encrypt symmetric key. The answer is suppose Bob has provided certificate to Alice with valid dates but somehow Bob's system got crashed or hacked and Bob has to regenerate new certificate. In that case it is good for Alice that every time establish new TLS connection better to request latest certificate and if that is not match with pre-installed one then drop connection. So this technique work well if we have installed certificate previously. But on internet this technique is not viable because we are accessing many new sites daily 
and how can we grab certificate of each and every site before accessing it. So how can we verify identity without pre-installing certificate? Let's understand with another bank example here. Alice has bank account in Standard Chartered Bank. Got checkbook from the bank. Bob has bank account in Citibank. Alice signed one check for Bob and provided to Bob. Bob submitted check to Citibank. Citibank has no reference of Alice signature. But Citibank knows that this check authorized by Standard Chartered and I know Standard Chartered Bank. So Citibank give this check to Standard Chartered and complete the verification. Similar way Certificate Authority also works. Let's understand. I want to open one site called Cisco.com. For secure communication, I will generate new pair of keys. I will prepare certificate. Fill all information regarding my website. Insert my public key into it. Now I am planning to sign my certificate with Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt has its own pair of keys. I will provide my certificate to Let's Encrypt. Let's encrypt fill issuer's information into certificate. Sign certificate and provide me back. Now if someone opens cisco.com then I will present this certificate to him. He will see that this certificate is signed by Let's Encrypt. So download public key of Let's Encrypt and verify my certificate. But the question is why someone should trust Let's Encrypt? So how Let's Encrypt will establish trust? Let's Encrypt has his own certificate and that certificate is signed by US government. But how I will get US government certificate? So this certificate is already present in your system. When you are installing web browsers like Firefox, Chrome or any operating system, it will come with around 200 pre-installed certificate issued by different governments around the world. This chain can have multiple intermediate CA certificate authority like Let's Encrypt. But Final certificate must be present into your system. So here is the conclusion of entire session. TLS or SSL have solved two major problems. How to exchange keys securely and how to manage identity to prevent men in the middle attack. And with this, we have finished the transport layer security protocol basics and fundamentals. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.